Thanks, Tiffany. So what do we mean by governability? Um, Brock talked to us about the issue of controlling poaching. But imagine what it means to have a governable Great Bitter Reef Marine Park or a community fishery that is considered governable. So thinking about a social ecological system, whether it's a watershed, a fishery, or a marine reserve, in terms of how governable it is or how governable it can be, uh, can potentially provide an intriguing and innovative way of approaching governance issues. Uh, the concept of governability has been identified mainly from the viewpoint of fisheries, uh, but now uh, there are empirical examples that extend to other natural resources as well. But despite the exciting progress is made, um, we argue that there are still analytical limitations that are lingering uh, when applying the current understanding of governability. And, and these issues are not simply methodological, but it actually touches on the, on the very um, uh, uh, essence of, of the concept. So in this presentation, I will review the current understanding of governability and its analytical approach. I will identify two limitations associated with it. I will draw on cybernetic theory to explain the conceptual underpinnings of the, these limitations and from there suggest an alternative approach. And by doing so, I will introduce a relational view of governability. So governability is now understood uh, as comprising two dimensions. Um, one is capacity to govern. So you think about resources, you think about political will, social capital, and these, all, all these contribute to your ability, ability to act, ability to intervene and affect others. And this is combined with a quality aspect, which basically represents norms, standards, principles, code of conducts, which should be there to guide any kind of governing effort. It's the yardstick. Um, governability is also understood as a, something of a balancing act between uh, a system to be governed and, and, and a governing system. So it's, it's a process of attunement, adjustment, co-learning between the needs and the demands of the, of the system to be governed and the capacity of the governing system. So the focus here is not rules and sanctions for governing, but on how governing evolves in rather complex and dynamic environments. And and it's also concerned with how capacity for governing can be built and designed in a way that can match the challenges of the social ecological system. So therefore, we need to understand context. We need to study context. We need to study different properties, characteristics of the governing system, characteristics of the, of the system to be governed. And we need to do it in a systematic and comprehensive way. And therefore, something like a governability assessment framework has been proposed. Um, this is one, one version of what it looks like. Um, no need to really dwell on the actual variables, but I want to highlight that it is a, it is a stepwise framework. Uh, it's systematic. It's, it's, it, ten, it attempts to be very comprehensive and holistic. So you start off by defining what the problems are, of course, and then it takes you through different components um, and, 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 and topics that you need to examine and, and measure and assess and, and trying to uh, connect, connect the dots. Um, however, we find some difficulties uh, with this approach. And the first limitation is that it, it seems, um, based on my own experience and, and other literature as well, it's almost nearly impossible to, to think that any given study will be able to complete all these prescribed steps. It would, it would constitute an enormous study that just never ends. Um, you need to understand all, everything important about social system, natural system, governing system, and how they interact with each other. Um, but also, how to arrive at the overall degree of governability is also not clear. So, if you, if you say um, there, it's low governability from one component and then you, you assess high governability from another uh, component, um, how to integrate or sum these different findings from each stage, that's, that's unclear. Uh, whether you take an average, it's, it's, it's an issue that, that remains. Um, in fact, Ostrom's social ecological system framework faces similar difficulty. Um, a lot of us are more familiar with this. 
But again, this framework starts with um, boxes, you know, different categories to look at, and then under each category, there are multiple variables to 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 um, to measure and and assess. And again, the problem is always which variables to choose, how many to choose, when do you know um, when do you know you have chosen a set of variables that that you can say confidently um, characterizing the system and then and 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 then draw different interactions between these variables. Um, so there's a limitations, but the problem is there are always more variables to to add. There, there's always that temptation. So this leads to a paradox that an approach grounded in holism is actually never able to deliver a holistic picture. The second limitation relates to pre-given categories. Um, because the assessment begins by designating, uh, okay, what are the governing system, what are the systems to be governed, or in the case of Ostrom's framework, what is the resource systems, resource units, governance systems, and actors. So when we're dealing with situations where system boundaries are more blurry, or we find actors that, are, that have overlapping roles, in these kind of situations, it's not, it's not quite easy how we can apply this type of framework. They simply don't fit well into these categories. So what about uh, remote island communities, which are basically self-governing, uh, or actors wearing multiple hats, which is actually, you know, which happens in, in social systems. So uh, based on this, governability as a balancing act between discrete categories or discrete subsystems runs the risk of reinscribing dualism or arbitrary boundaries in, in its analytical practice. So is there a way out? Is there an alternative approach that can bypass these um, limitations? And to answer these, uh, we will draw on cybernetic theory. So cybernetic, cybernetics is a study of control, response, feedback, and intervention, and it is very much part of general systems theory. Um, it's useful to talk about cybernetics in terms of three orders. So the first order of cybernetics is, refers to a simple mechanistic feedback control paradigm from an objective vantage point. So you can see from the left, governing system is outside of the um, boundary of the system being studied or controlled. Uh, in this, when, when, you, uh, when it is considered most governable, governing system would be you know, maybe very close to the system to be governed or almost touching the boundary, but it's never in it. Um, just a layman's example, you can think of it as a guided missile, right? Missile is never intended to land on you. It always goes somewhere else. Um, but this, this is couched in, in, in the classic realist and positive, positivist ep epistemology which posits that the natural world is out there, something that can be methodically controlled and studied, while the social system is also approached with a view that it can be neatly understood, planned, and governed. However, it, we know better. Uh, it, it became evident that the first order paradigm was unsuitable to cope with the distinct tendency of the social system to self-organize and self-steer. Um, so they, uh, invented something called socio-cybernetics, which is more actor-oriented. It allows for more agency uh, with uh, self-goal-setting capacity and also allows for um, positive, uh, a positive feedback loop um, through self-fulfilling or self-defeating prophecies. So now in this case, the observer or the governor is part of the system boundary. It's part of the couple system. And the governing system would apply um, um, adaptive capacity and receives, receives contextual feedback. And when, when you consider that it is most governable, uh, governing system and systems to be governed would be in a, in, uh, in a tightly coupled um, uh, situation. And others have described that uh, as a, it, achieving institutional fit or social ecological uh, fit. And what this means is that the progression of the first order cybernetics to second order actually parallels the broad transition from governing to governance. Uh, in other words, it's a switch from the command and control style of governing to more uh, uh, complexity-based, uh, context-based paradigm, such as 
adaptive governance, resilience, interactive governance, which also includes Ostrom's um, framework. And of course, this is good and very useful, um, but except that there are still these inher inherent analytical challenges that we uh, saw earlier. And this suggests that there is room for a um, little bit more tinkering, uh, more exp uh, theoretical exploration. So we can introduce um, third order cybernetics. Uh, this offers a rel relativist and constructivist worldview. And, and it means that governing system and system, go system to be governed become only meaningful to describe them relationally. So um, you can think of an example, uh, a teacher uh, himself or herself uh, learning the lecture material best by actually teaching it. And so then the emphasis on the co-making, simultaneous making of the capacity and knowledge and meanings with which the governor and the governed come to be defined and assembled. Um, so here, the analytical rigor now rests on being able to elucidate how a system is uh, remade and redefined by each other. So a governing system would try to define the governing object, trying to define the system to be governed itself, and system to be governed defines the governing capacity. And when we say the system is most governable, it's the, it's the more of a merging of the actor groups rather than linking through fit or networks. And how does this happen? Um, we can identify two ways. Uh, first, looking at the, gover the governing system, um, instead of asking how powerful government is or how much resources they have at their disposal, um, this view says that governor's capacity or power is not is never their own of their own making, but it's all it's only enabled by or as much as the system's governs allows it. So it kind of turns the argument on its head. But this relational view is succinctly described by uh, Bruno Latour um, when when he said when an actor simply has power, nothing happens and she is powerless. On the other hand, when an actor exerts power. It is others who perform the action. So it's only when others conform, you can claim that you have power. You can show that you, you, what you're doing is effective. So this view sees that capacity, it sees capacity as a consequence uh, rather than a property that causes action. So analytically, one could focus, more, uh, focus on the feedback loop that goes back to the governing system. Um, and, th and, and, and um, focus on concepts such as legitimacy, uh, self-compliance, trust, and these things that actually confer the governing system the power. On the other hand, um, it also means that um, the governing system has a part in defining what it is dealing with. So it has a part in actually constructing the system to be governed. So this goes beyond simply government trying to understand what the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park is doing, what the climate is doing. But in a sense, the government, government through their activities is actually, in a way, uh, constructing certain representation of, of the system to be governed. So when a governing system intervention is conceived and acted upon, such as zoning scheme, prof professionalization of fishers, organization of fisher groups, uh, instituting fishing quotas, et cetera, it invariably means that the govern governing system is promoting certain representation of systems to be governed, such that the systems to be governed um, uh, 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 conforms to the vision of, of the governing system. And, and what this means uh, analytically is that um, those techniques that the governing system is employing to reinforce or change this, change this representation uh, is also key to making sense of what system to be governed is all about, um, in addition to the inherent characteristics of the system to be governed. So from this, um, we can offer an alternative definition of governability. And it is a temporary stabilization. Uh, it is always, a, uh, always provisional, because it's always a moving target. Um, but of the new relations among those actors involved in governance, uh, in terms of analysis, instead of aiming for a holistic picture with pre-selected categories, 
This perspective can start from zooming in on certain entry points, um, certain interventions, certain events, perhaps like uh, bleaching events, and, and the effects of them on the various actors that are involved in governance. Um, and from this, one can de deduce the capacities, the drivers, and the unique context of the systems in question. Um, there are some examples uh, that fit with, um, that, that go along with this, this idea of uh, third order of governability in the context of fisheries. Um, this is a table that summarizes the three different orders of governability according to various char characteristics, including certain risks. And so in conclusion, uh, systems to be governed, um, well, it could be anything, it could be the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park, uh, is not only the constructor of the government's capacity, um, it's what makes government look good or not, but it is also a construct that, got, that the government recreates as a, as a gover governable ob uh, object. When government um, applies zoning scheme that, that presents system to be governed, the marine park in a certain way, which makes it amenable to certain types of interventions. Um, and by doing this, we can um, move beyond asking whether something is governable or how much is some, uh, something is governable, but we can ask how fisheries or marine park can be made governable or why certain things remain ungovernable despite certain interventions. Um, finally, uh, this, might seem, this type of analysis might seem less systematic, causal, uh, or quantitative, but it offers uh, another possibility to understand governability um, based on a different epistemology, um, which might be perhaps more feasible to apply uh, without trying to assess the whole universe. So for more details, um, these two papers can be consulted along with other papers in the reference list. Thank you very much.